Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is my first Mock Reads Choice Awards video of 2023, where I'll be talking about some literary slash mainstream fiction coming out this year that has caught my fancy. <laughs> so I started the Mock Reads Choice Awards uh, last year, which is really my way of trying to encourage myself to read a little bit of front list each year. Most of my reading list is made up of lots of back list. Uh, and I named it after the Goodreads Choice Awards. Uh, back in the day, uh, we were able to nominate uh, whatever we wanted for the first round of the Goodreads Choice Awards. You know, they start near the end of the year and are basically a popularity contest about the favorite books that came out uh, that year. And uh, for the past couple of years, uh, Goodreads decided instead of letting us nominate, they do all that work for us. And I mean, we could, you know, vote for, you know, whatever's on there. Um, but uh, that just didn't work for me that I because uh, my tastes aren't always in line with the buzziest books. And so I decided to do mock reads as my way of uh, just uh, choosing from new releases what I might like to read. But I have to be kind of careful with it just because uh, my reading schedule is so regimented. I only have so much space and I want to be able to read at least a few titles in uh, literary slash mainstream fiction, historical fiction, science fiction, and fantasy, and then uh, YA uh, science fiction and fantasy as well. But the truth is it can be hard sometimes to narrow myself as much as I need to uh, because, you know, only so much time in the day and the year and the so forth to read. Uh, and right now I'm looking mostly just at the beginning of the year, the first six months of the year, and I already have like uh, four titles uh, for each of my uh, little uh, divisions other than YA, uh, SFF. I'm having a little more trouble there so far. But uh, for my adult categories, uh, I, there's at least four titles that interest me in each uh, category that mostly come out in the first half of the year, uh, only a couple in the second half, so who knows what other exciting uh, finds I'll find later on this year that I might want to read, but you know, there's only so much time. <laughs> So for the time being, I'm just going to stick with, uh, you know, giving myself a TBR so that uh, it doesn't get away from me. And I thought I would start with uh, my literary uh, and mainstream fiction category, because much like with literary fiction, I'm giving myself angst over an existential crisis here in that uh, I have five titles uh, and that's just a bit too much. I feel like I, I need to whittle it down to four. So I thought I would uh, talk about the five titles that uh, caught my fancy. A couple are kind of buzzy, some aren't. Some came out in the last three months and some are coming out in the spring. So, you know, all that exciting tingling feeling for, you know, the newness uh, coming at you right now. So the first book I have to mention is Sam by Allegra Goodman. This one was indeed uh, on my most anticipated releases of 2023, a video I made back in January, which I'll link down below. Uh, and uh, Allegra Goodman is one of my favorite authors, so of course this caught my fancy, and uh, now I have it out from the library, as you do. And now for my other titles, like with Allegra Goodman, um, these are all authors I've read before and am uh, eager to read again. And I will start with uh, Take What You Need by Idra Novi, which uh, just came out uh, about a week ago uh, on the 14th. Uh, and I think it's already gaining a fair bit of buzz. Uh, and anyway, this is a story. It takes place in Appalachia. Uh, it follows um, a... Uh, estranged uh, mother slash stepdaughter, uh, I believe. Uh, they're no longer, you know, mother slash stepdaughter officially, but they had that relationship in the past, and I believe it's the uh, middle-aged woman, Jean, who uh, lives in an Appalachian uh, small town and is uh, doing some intriguing metalwork uh, and making sort of a name for herself in like that in a sort of crafty field. Uh, and then her uh, former stepdaughter, uh, Leia, comes to stay with her. And uh, it's around the time, I believe, of uh, the age of Trump. And so we're getting into uh, the fact that these, I think, are two more uh, liberal women sort of dealing with a more conservative, um, you know, populace around them. Uh, so it'll be a little bit about, you know, those uh, uh, realities, cultural realities, and I think also just about their past baggage as well. Uh, and... 
A few years ago, I read Novi's Ways to Disappear, which was about a Brazilian novelist who mysteriously uh, disappeared from her life and uh, sort of the mystery thriller uh, plot uh, that uh, followed her, the main character trying to track her down, and I enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, I think uh, this one might be a little bit even more up my alley being a more literary. Next, I have I Could Live Forever by Hannah Halperin, which is coming out uh, on April 11th. And this is a story about um, a young couple. I believe uh, the young woman is like in an MFA program, like, you know, uh, maybe a writer of some sort. You know, sometimes it seems like a convenient path for writers to take for their protagonists. But uh, anyway, she meets this uh, artist, I believe a musician, a young man, and uh, they... Uh, fall in love or, you know, have, you know, a good relationship is starting between them, except for the fact that the uh, young man is an addict. He lives with his parents and uh, is not really able to get over his addiction to drugs. Uh, and I believe, you know, Halperin, I think, is known for taking a really sympathetic but honest look at uh, these sort of issues. Uh, she cut her teeth on a novel I've read last year, Something Wild, which was about domestic abuse, and uh, she herself, uh, I believe, has uh, experience uh, as a uh, social worker. Uh, and I believe uh, that brings a sort of um, a reality, in a way, to how she um, deals with uh, writing these characters. Uh, so I'm, I'm rather hopeful for how uh, the complications and the messiness of, the, of this sort of relationship, uh, uh, you know, two people who care deeply for each other, but, you know, how, are deeply flawed and dealing with this very um, dangerous and, uh, you know, grasping problem of addiction, like how it all works out. So uh, I'm really uh, hopeful for this one. Also in April, on the 18th, uh, there is The Last Animal by Ramona Ossibel. She, I believe, is a little bit more famous. Uh, her last uh, book, which I haven't read, really made some um, rounds, and I saw this uh, touted, I think a book all have touted the, uh, this book as one of her uh, anticipateds of uh, the next quarter. Uh, and um, it is a book about um, a mother who is a scientist, and uh, she is going to study mammoth DNA, and she takes her two daughters along. And I really love this sort of premise, where it's about the relationships between women, but there's also this um, exterior motivator of science and, you know, discovery on top of it. Uh, I just feel like it's going to be a really interesting juxtaposition. Uh, and I've also read uh, one of Ossibel's uh, previous novels, uh, which was No One Is Here Except For All Of Us. And, and this was a magical, realist sort of Holocaust novel, which, you know, didn't work for me 100%. Uh, I, I just I have trouble with uh, that sort of premise in dealing with the Holocaust. Uh, but I think her writing since then has been a little bit different. So uh, And I'm still, you know, just going on faith that I really like the premise of this one. And finally, we have Swimming with Ghosts by Michelle Braffman coming out on June 13th. I think this one is a little less well known, especially outside of uh, the D.C. area where I am, because this is a local author to me. Uh, so that's, I think, part of why, you know, she's on my radar. Uh, and this is a... Uh, uh, suburban drama sort of book uh, following two uh, mothers in a suburban fake DC, <laughs> I think, uh, suburb <laughs> around. Uh, and uh, they have, you know, issues with uh, addiction and, and other things that I think they're masking with the usual suburban sort of behavior. But then, um, like, a, a storm rolls into town and they actually have to rely on each other as the power goes out. And I think uh, things start to get a little more real. Uh, so I'm excited for this one. I've read uh, Brofman's other novel and short stories and enjoyed them. And this is also a smaller publisher than the others, I believe. So, you know, always kind of nice to give a little more attention to the underdogs. So uh, I really do want to get my hands on this one as well. And maybe I'll even go to the local uh, bookstore event uh, for her, you know, opening her launch and all that. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I can still read the book either way. Uh, so there we have it. Those are my five literary slash mainstream books I want to read this year before mock reads, which I'm hoping to read then, you know, before um, October or November, just in case, you know, one or two of these actually make the Goodreads Choice Awards, and I'd like to be able to vote for them <laughs> if they do. Uh, 
but uh, I'm hoping to get it down to four so that it matches the rest of my adult categories. Uh, so one of these books has to go, and I'd been biting my nails over it for a while about which one uh, I should, you know, let go of. And then it came to me, I could let go of Sam, which was something I didn't even consider for a while because this was officially on my anticipated reads list. And she's definitely, Allegra Goodman is definitely the author who is most my favorite author out of all of these authors. But that being said, I've kind of fallen out of love with some of her recent writing, particularly her latest book, The Chalk Artist. And I feel like uh, she didn't really do those characters and situations justice. And it's kind of similar to this book that it follows younger characters around. This one is a buildings roman about this young girl. Uh, and I don't really feel like she did her teenage characters much justice in the last book. And in all honesty, the premise of this book on its own doesn't uh, intrigue me as much. And uh, I don't know, I'm just going off of some bad feelings and also some iffy reviews that say that basically she isn't uh, living up to the serious ideas that she's laying down, that it's kind of more style over substance in a way, like she's putting in all that, you know, vague but beautiful literary language, but I don't know if it's, you know, quite taking the risks it needs to with talking about a buildings roman that gets into some sticky territory, like about, you know, consent and relationships and all of that stuff is my understanding researching this book. So here I've had it from the library for a few months now, and I've been, you know, you know, extending my hold <laughs> a fair bit, and now I'm wondering maybe I won't even get to reading it this year at all. But uh, part of me is relieved because uh, then I could just read the other four books and uh, not have to let go of any of them. <laughs> Unless, of course, something else from later in the year catches my fancy, who knows, or maybe I'll actually juggle my uh, reading schedule around so that I could actually read more front list and not give myself a hard time about it. I mean, I know this is all kind of just subjective, like, uh, you know, setting rules and guidelines for myself, but I do know there's only so much time uh, in a day, in a year, and so forth, and I have a big reading list ahead of me, which I'll hopefully be talking about on this channel, you know, piecemeal, very soon. <laughs> so that about covers it for me now, uh, and I will leave the Goodreads links for all of these books down below, as, uh, as well as the reviews I wrote for the uh, books I mentioned reading previously for these authors. And I also wrote a mock reads uh, post last year for fun where I talked about the books I read last year for this endeavor. <laughs> so I'll link that blog post down below as well. Anyway, you should see me back on this channel within the next couple of days to wrap up my week in reading. I am indeed reading, mostly backlist, but, uh, you know, I am keeping myself busy there, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I hope all of you who are reading for prizes uh, are having fun with it, uh, no matter how it is you're doing it. I'm also, of course, uh, trying to get through the booktube prize reading before my ballot is due at the end of the month, but uh, that is... Uh, you know, anxiety I'll talk about in another time, probably in my Am Reading videos, so stay tuned. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.